What's up YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another video. This is one of those long videos that most people don't care about. A few of you guys do, I know, but uh, I, I wanted to take a closer look at Forlom. And uh, in my last big batch from Collector Archive Services, one of the figures I got is a very, very tough to find uh, Spanish PBP Forlom. And uh, it was just a really, really awesome find. And uh, one of the tougher Spanish PBP figures to find uh, out there. Uh, there's certainly more expensive ones, but not many. Um, you know, the, the in terms of like the top five holy grails of Spanish PBP figures, this is certainly in the top five. You know, the uh, Spanish-made PBP Bosque with the uh, toxic light green pistachio limbs. That's probably number one on the list. I talked to Javier Rui Lopez, who uh, wrote this book, which I just got. Uh, and he said that an ungraded, you know, nice example of the of the toxic limbs boss can go for as high as 3,000 US dollars. Now I saw one that sold on eBay fairly recently and it was not in mint condition, but it was ungraded. It was still really nice, and that one still sold for about twelve hundred dollars U.S. So, very expensive figure. But this Forlom is one that uh, you know maybe a lot of people don't know about. Uh, if you're a longtime collector, you certainly do. But if you're a casual collector, you probably don't know about this figure. But this is a very very tough one to find, and the reason is is it's got a different colored arm. I mean, obviously it's made in Spain, but the the big difference is uh, the the armor that goes around the front and the straps and onto the back with a backpack that is a reddish brown color and uh, that color is uh, you know uh, significantly different than the Hong Kong or the no country of origin versions of this figure and um, I absolutely love this figure this I'll show you the label again real quick for those that didn't see the unboxing but uh, you can see it here it's PBP POC it's really PBP but they labeled it PBP POC Star Wars 4 LOM red Red armor slash backpack, no COO, one line LFL, and it came back with an 85 plus. Uh, and I, you know, when I originally got it, uh, I thought it was not going to get that high. It had a lot of what I thought was damage on the back of the cape, but uh, luckily, Collector Archive Services, to their credit, uh, they do light cleanings for uh, any submission. It's, it's included as part of the price, and this this cape was covered with a bunch of junk. And uh, uh, they ended up able to get it off. The only remaining remnant is right there in that lower corner right there. But usually this this cape, uh, when you find these these PBP four lines, usually this cape is in really rough condition. The sleeves uh, are, are are damaged, and back here around the neck area, when you wrap around the you know that wraps around his neck, that portion is usually torn in some sort. I mean, I, I, I can't tell you how many examples I've seen of this figure where the cape is torn. So uh, it's it's a very tough figure to find in a high grade. Uh, but, uh, you know, this was one that I got, I, fa I got frustrated one day as I'm oft as I often do when I'm looking for a specific figure. And I went online and I, uh, just to Google, just a Google search, and I typed in Star Wars PBP Forlom. And this guy in Spain came up. He did not speak English very well. Uh, his name was Juan. And so we used uh, WhatsApp, which is like a, you know, chat thing. And, and I used Google Translate to figure out what he wanted for the figure. He also sent me a lot of photos of the, of the figure uh, so I could verify that it was 100% Spanish PBP Forlom. And sure enough, it was. He gave me a very, very fair price for it. It was delivered within 10 days. He sent it in like a little envelope, believe it or not. No no box, no anything. And somehow it made it here in one piece without getting crushed to death. I mean, it was no protection. Uh, but it made it here. And uh, so I sent it off to get graded, and it came back with a great grade. So, uh, But usually, like I said, the cape is in really rough shape. You can see just some very slight wear there. The eyes are the other area where they usually just... I mean, this silver paint is usually all gone. So... Uh, but this had very tight limbs. Everything was very, all the joints were tight and just a beautiful example. The other thing you got to be careful of is with these connector pieces. Uh, the, you know, I think they used a different kind of plastic for, for that armor slash backpack. 
And so these are usually broken. These straps or the holes or the or the straps themselves are broken. So all that stuff is got is stuff that you got to be aware of. Be aware of. Uh, most sellers disclose it, but sometimes they don't. So you got to be really careful if you're looking for one of these. Uh, you know, uh, ungraded. You can probably get one of these for in the neighborhood of I don't know, uh, three to five hundred dollars. Uh, I've seen a UKG graded example. I can't remember if it's still up the, on eBay or not, but they wanted. $1,100 US for a uh, UKG 80 grade. So they are very expensive in high grade. Um, but uh, anyway, I, I, I'm just very, very lucky to have gotten it for the price I did. So Juan, if, you watch, if you're watching this, thank you. But anyway, I wanted to show you this, just, you know, let, let you take a, a closer look at it. But it's just a beautiful, beautiful figure. This red armor is, is just so much different than uh, the Hong Kong or the No Country of Origin version of this figure. And the only example I have uh, that's graded, I've got I've got one loose one that's in grading right now. I don't know what kind of score it's going to get, but uh, the only loose example I have, well, actually, I got two. I got two examples. I got one in here. Let me pull this one out real quick. This is one that that's not graded, but you can see this is a a, a Kenner card, but you can see how different the armor is versus the uh, the PBP made. And uh, and we're going to go through, uh, much to your chagrin probably, we'll go through some other differences from the book in a second, but you can see how different the armor color is. The other interesting thing that I, I don't know if I've talked about or not, but even with Hong Kong figures, the colors can vary. So this is a, gra a UKG graded loose forlom. This is a Hong Kong country of origin, and it's, it's uh, encased with a uh, Dutch clipper card. Um, and so if you see on the back here, uh, it's got the German card, really nice. Uh, the card back is, is really nice and it's got the kind of the clipper offer over here. Um, and so that's the card back for it, but all of those clipper card backs, they came with, um, Hong Kong made figures. Um, you can see down here where it says made in Hong Kong. So all the figures are made in Hong Kong for those cl Dutch Clipper cards, but or at least the ones I'm, I'm aware of. But you can see even even with um even with uh two different you know these are both Hong Kong figures, but the armor color I'll, I'll zoom it in just a little bit so you can take a look, but you can see even these are different. So this the one in uh that's graded by UKG, this is a much darker brown than this one. So uh, I'm not sure if that's coming through or not. I'm using both hands, so I can't focus very well. But uh, so there, there is variation uh, in armor color, even within Hong Kong. Uh, Hong Kong made uh, four loms. But this is a really nice one. This is, um, you know, graded by UKG, and it's just a loose, you know, a loose graded one, and it's got an 85%. Um, I got this a, a while ago. But I, I just thought it was so cool to have it with that Dutch Clipper card. Um and the price was not really much more than uh, than if I just got a, a loose graded one. So, anyway, so that's that. Um, and then this one is the ungraded one that I have, and that one is a seventy-seven back. So that's you know made in Hong Kong, as you can see right there. So anyway, let's get back to the four lom PBP, which is really the point of the video. I got this book in, um, and uh, this I've, I've been wanting to get it for a while. But I just for whatever reason, uh, you know, timing was terrible for pocketbook. But anyway, uh, Javier Ruiz Lopez is the author, written by Javier Ruiz Lopez. The knowledge of a whole life of Spanish collecting in your hands. Uh, Blacked out Ewoks, who's another YouTuber, he uh, has gone through this book in great detail. So I'm not going to do that here. If you'd like to check out uh, his channel, he's got a number of videos on this book. And it's just a fantastic book. And what it does is it goes through the history of the Spanish factory uh, PBP, or well, excuse me, PAC, which was uh, you know the, the the company that was doing a lot of the Empire Strikes Back figures in the early '80s. They eventually merged with another company called PBP, and uh, so they they merged. Kind of, I think it was '82 or 1983. I haven't read through all the history uh, exactly, but. They they continued to use the PAC uh, logo on uh, a number of the ESB cars before they finally switched over to just PVP. Uh, but it's a very unique uh, uh, variation of of figures uh, in in the line, and they're highly sought after nowadays. Um, you know, pretty much anything foreign goes for just crazy money. 
Um, but uh, anyway, since I have the book now, I thought that we would just take briefly a, a look at uh, this page that covers the uh, Red Armor, uh, the Red Armor Forlom, and you can see here if I can get to stay focused here. Scar No CEO Red Armor. So a lot of the PBP figures did have a scar where the Hong Kong, uh, where the Hong Kong. Uh, uh, trademark date stamp or whatever on the back of the leg would be. The original Pac figures just used parts from Hong Kong and then they assembled and painted them uh, in in Spain. Whereas the PBP figures, uh, those were manufactured in Spain. The parts were manufactured in Spain, so they scarred out wherever it said Hong Kong and used their own mold. You know, used those molds to make their own figures. So uh, anyway, I you know I I won't read through this line by line, but. You know, it, it, I just wanted to show an example of the types of information or the type of information that Javier Rui Lopez offers uh, here in the book, and it goes through the stamp markings, the types of plastics they use. Uh, it says the head is very similar in texture and opacity on both figures. However, a pale ochre plastic is used on the figure, while a pinkish sallow color is used on the European variants. So, what they're basically saying is is that the plastic that is used uh, on this figure is a little bit more pale in color. And I did do a comparison here. It is very faint. I mean, it's it's just a very faint difference. But it is just slightly lighter. Uh, and uh, let's see what else it says. Uh, the torso is very similar in texture and opacity. Uh, again, the pale ochre kind of color is used. It's just a very slight difference. This is more, I, I don't know, it's, it's like... Uh, this one just has a, a, a little bit different greenish kind of hue to it. Now, the other big difference, the, the two big differences for the PBP figure uh, are the red armor. Obviously, there's a there, very similar uh, mold for the guns, but but the gun is uh, kind of a. Uh, it says you, it can either come as matte or glossy finish. Uh, he doesn't denote which one it is, but there. But I can tell you that. After doing a lot of research on Rebel Scum and on Imperial Gunnery, there is a difference between this weapon and the standard Kenner weapon. Uh, this weapon uh, has a, a more of a matte finish than the standard Kenner weapons, which are glossy. He's saying, or Javier Ruiz Lopez is saying that it, the, the Spanish figures can come with either one. So, I, you know, again, I'm, I'm only going on what he says versus what Imperial Gunnery says. So there's a slight difference there in what they say there. Um, but the big differences are the red armor. And the bi the other big one that a lot of people don't know about is the the cape. This cape, you know, it's got kind of a a faux leather kind of look to it. I, I, it's not leather, but it, it it looks like leather. It's like a, you know, you can see all the texturing in there. Um, but the interior of the cape on on uh, it's really difficult to show this, but hopefully that's coming through. The interior of the cape has a white weave to it. A white weave. You can see the white weave on the interior of the cape. On the Kenner figures, it's more of a greenish, uh, a, a greenish weave. And a lot of unscrupulous sellers, if they have the PBP figure and they have the red armor, th but they don't have a cape that's in good condition, which is a common problem, as I talked about, uh, what they'll do is they'll use a Kenner cape and say, hey, it's 100% complete. It's 100% complete PBP figure. I want money dollars for it. A lot of money, and uh, but the, the but when you're buying it, you got to make sure that you ask for interior photos of the cape because the cape uses a white weave instead of a green weave. It's a very slight lightish green weave, and they don't show it in the they don't compare it in the book. But I, I will show you what the white weave looks like. There, that's what the interior of the of the cape looks like. It's a white whitish kind of brown weave versus a light. It's like a whitish green weave. And, uh, you know, he's comparing it to the no COO. It's th this photo doesn't do a great job of showing it, but, uh, if you see it in the light, the, the no COO and the Kenner U S made uh, or Hong Kong figures, uh, that they have the greenish kind of color to it. So it's just a really, you know, it's just a really difficult figure to verify and make sure that you have all the correct pieces. Luckily, the seller of this one gave me really detailed photos, so I was able to compare it against uh, the Imperial Gunnery to confirm that it was um, that it was correct. And uh, you know, it, it looks like uh, it says both the nose and small dots on the face 
are painted with a glossy deep black color versus a matte dark gray that is used on the European variants. And you can kind of see that here. Hopefully, I don't know if that's coming through or not, but uh, this is a much deeper, darker, glossy black versus this one. It's, it's got a little bit of a, a gray hint to it. Um, and it you know, obviously goes through the, uh, the chest armor. And, it, you know, again, it says the rifle appears to be similar to the European slash Kenner weapon, but there are some variants, matte versus glossy finish mainly. Um, all of them are th are the thicker variants. So there is a thinner version of this of this in terms of uh, uh, the width of it versus, uh, you know, there's some others that have just a, a thinner kind of, uh, like if you're looking at it from this, from, from an angle, uh, from, you know, from this side, uh, the, the weapon can be uh, thicker or thinner. So, uh, again, his information is a little different than what was on Imperial Gunnery. Imperial Gunnery was very, very adamant that there is a completely different weapon for this versus the, uh, the Kenner counterpart. So, that's luck luckily, the one that this guy sold me matched up with what Imperial Gunnery had. So, um, but anyway, you know, the book itself is, is really great, though, for, you know, if you're looking at a figure online for sale or wherever on Facebook or eBay... Um, the book is great for, for giving you uh, very explicit detail on uh, the differences between the PBP figures and no, they, they, they basically compare it to no COO figures, but you can also compare it to like Hong Kong's and things like that uh, using Imperial Gunnery or Rebel Scum or, you know, a number of other websites. But um, so that's kind of what I did when I was buying this to make sure that it was legit and, and not, you know, fake parts or, or not fake parts, but replacement parts using other countries of origin. So anyway, I'm, I'm sure that's way more detailed than you'd like, but I, you know, this is a, a, a really, really difficult figure to acquire. And for those that are looking for one, uh, there's, there's a number of differences that you gotta, that you have to look out for. Uh, thanks for watching and I'm sure I'll be back soon.